Here we have an excellent, well-made dresser. It has good bones. The only problem is the finish is a bit orangey and it's also hazing and cracking and peeling in a few areas. We're going to be adding some color using coal black in the Fusion Mineral paint. And on the other areas, such as the top where you need a very durable top coat and protection, we're going to be using the gel stain and top coat. And that will also be toning down the orange. So, of course, we've cleaned with our TSP solution and water just to make sure that there's no dirt on the surface. Anything else, we will be using our odorless mineral solvent to get off any stickiness that may still be on the surface. And where you see the blue stickers, that's where we're going to paint it coal black. So we're going to have a bit of a mixture of the gel stain top coat because there is a beautiful grain to this wood and we still want to see that and appreciate that. And other areas we will be using the coal black and we're going to be using the durability of this gel stain top coat for the very top of this unit because it gives a very, very durable finish, literally hard as nails. We have four different gel stains and they have the top coat already incorporated into the stain itself. So you end up with basically a tinted oil-based urethane coating, super durable and it's super thick as is. We have patina, which has no pigment in it, however, we called it patina because it does add quite a significant amount of yellowing to the surface. The next we have the grey stone, which has a little bit of pigment along with the black also. A tiny bit of pigment. The double espresso, however, has about three times as much to give you really good covering as far as colour goes. Now, just for an example, I wanted to show you a couple of pieces. Now this is a couple years ago that we painted this. This is putty and then I used the double espresso gel stain and it was mixed half and half with the odorless mineral spirits to basically give me something very thin and that's what I used as an antiquing um, medium for this. And then I ended up putting the top coat which was patina and you can see how much it has yellowed over time. And that's just something that you do need to expect with an oil base. And another ideal project, which the gel stain top coat is good for, is something that is really, really old. You've got bare wood, you've got flaking paint, and you really, I mean, I loved seeing this kind of finish, and I really wanted to keep it intact. So that's with the patina. Again, it's yellowed quite a bit, hence the name, patina. Super durable, you can literally dance on this surface if you wish to. <laughs> um, so it comes in the four colors, and it's very thick as is. Some surfaces you may need to thin using the odorless mineral uh, solvent, and what it will do is thin it enough to to either penetrate into a bare wood surface. Uh, for instance, if you have open poured wood, such as oak, you definitely want to thin your first coat using this so that it's thin enough to go into the pores and fill those pores. And then your subsequent coats will use less of the solvent and you could finish off with a solid, a finishing coat not thinned. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the other thing is it dries in a matte sheen, so if you end up putting one coat after another after another, it doesn't matter, it will always be a matte, super washable surface. We've already TSP'd and cleaned this surface, however there's some stickiness as well as some scratches, so I want to use the odorless, uh, odorless mineral spirits to remove the stickiness as well as give it a very light sand because when I put on my coat of the gel stain and top coat, I want it to be as even as possible. So, gloves on, and I really love this product. The odorless mineral uh, spirit does not have, you know, a disgusting smell. 
and uh, it's been refined quite a bit to take out some of the nasties. Yeah, we're not sure what the sticky stuff is, but it definitely is coming off. I'm using a very uh, fine 400 grit sandpaper here and going with the grain because remember we are going to keep this wood grain look. You will be able to see it through our top coat. So just give it a slight sanding with the grain. I was able to take off that sticky stuff, whatever it is, and just wipe it down. And that is all I need to do to the top of the surface to make sure that it is prepped for our gel stain and top coat. So there's some scratches here, and that's where I'm going to use a little bit more pressure with my sandpaper because I want those scratches to be as even as possible. And that's all I need to do. Give it a wipe. And I'm just using the rest of this, uh, or sorry, a little bit more of the odorless mineral solvents because I don't know if whatever that stickiness was there, if it's over here. Although I can't feel it, but better to be safe than sorry. I already have it out anyhow. After cleaning the whole dresser with TSP and water, it has now had a chance to dry. I did, however, use the odorless mineral spirits to clean the top a little bit extra. Now I'm going to apply our coal black mineral paint. This is a water base and it's going to be a super smooth finish. I'll be using my Stahlmeister roller. This is the 10 centimeter wide one. And just applying a very thin coat I do expect to apply two coats because I'm going to do it really, really thinly. Um, I could get away with one coat using a brush, but again, I want a super flat surface. I prefer to paint on a horizontal rather than a vertical surface, so I'm placing the drawer on top of the dresser itself, using the cardboard just as a protective because there is a little piece of metal at the back and just don't want to have any more uh, gouges in the top that there already are. So. Now I'm ready to paint using our coal black. Let's give it a bit of a shake. I'm not gonna bother stirring it. You will find that a lot of our paints are a bit thinner than others. Unscrew the top, a little bit of a leakage there, but there is a protective piece lid cover here. And usually I use a paper towel and just grab that and lift it right off. Sometimes you'll get a spurt, but if you use a paper towel, that tends not to happen. I'm going to pour it into my tray. Not too much. I only poured in one quarter of the container. And then, using my roller, dipping it in and then taking off the excess. Using a fair amount of pressure, I put a bit of pressure on both sides here, on the tip and near the handle. Sometimes that's where extra paint can gather. Okay, here we go. It's gonna be a super smooth surface. Now I chose to go with the roller because the, there's a lot of flat surfaces to this dresser, especially the sides. So. Okay, as you see that the paint is leaving less, then just reload your roller. Again, taking out the excess and pushing a little bit more on both edges of your roller the handle side and the side and then flat. Okay. Now I will get the edges of this drawer. I'll do that when I do the final my final glide by, so to speak. There we go. Just using your roller, slight angle. The nap is, you know, deep enough that it will get into the grooves of the door. Final back and forth 
with one long stroke so you don't see any edges of the roller or in this case like I mean if it was a paintbrush you would see edges of a paintbrush See just a little bit there. Lighten up on your pressure. And that should be, it looks super smooth. <laughs> I may very well get away with just doing the one coat. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the rest, the other drawers and the sides of the unit as well as the top dental molding and then start on my gel stain top coat. I used one third of a pint of the coal black and I painted both the sides and the two front drawers. It is a flawless finish. I used the Stallmaster rollers and I'm super happy with the end result. So now is time to apply the gel stain and top coat onto this top, which is a damaged lacquer finish. What I wanted to do is go over a couple of things. First of all, this is an oil base. It does have a bit of a smell to it, so crack open the window just a tad so you can get some fresh air. Also, you want to make sure that you haven't shaken the container, although it has to be stirred very well, and we'll go over that. Uh, you also want to make sure that there's no fans going or dust in the air because when you're laying on the uh, top coat, you want to make sure that dust doesn't settle on it because it will become part of the finish. It's not the end of the world. You can always give it a light sanding and a second coat the next day. All right, you have a can of the gel stain top coat. Using a can opener, pop the lid. Again, the reason why you don't want to shake it is because you will introduce bubbles and those bubbles will stay within the product. It's quite thick. Stir stick, that's how you want to mix the product. Now, I'm going to go right to the very bottom. There is quite a bit of sludge at the bottom and that is exactly what is to be expected. The top is very thin and the bottom is kind of like a jelly. So you want to make sure that you incorporate all that sludge that's in the bottom. That's all the goodness of the product. Give it a really good stir. This may take a couple of minutes. If you just go ahead and start dipping your brush, you're only gonna get the oils on top and it's not going to be a, a successful experience, that is for sure. So giving it a good stir for a couple of minutes. Another thing, if you're not familiar with the product, you wanna make sure that you've had a chance to experiment with it. If this is the only piece you have about and you don't have any spare wood or other finished uh, samples of boards, what you could do is use the back of your cabinet or the inside or the bottom of a drawer because that is going to allow you to play with the product, see if it's going to give you the right color, see if it's going to give you what you are looking for. And also it's a good thing to try to practice. Um, you know, applying the product. So we're getting, we're getting better. I can still feel as I put the, my stir stick in, it's thin at the top and a bit thicker at the bottom. So keep on stirring it until you get a nice, completely consistent product. All right. What I'm going to be doing, because I am familiar with this particular product, and I, this finish, I want to thin it out just a little bit, about 5%. If it was raw wood that I want to stain, and I wanted to turn this into a penetrating um, stain finish, then you want to do about a 50-50. So 50% of the product and 50% of the odorless solvent. And that will allow it to soak right into the wood. Now we only have a couple of spots, a couple of blemishes on this uh, piece that is raw wood. I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, I think we're totally stirred up now and you can see how it flows nicely, whereas before it was very watery on top and sludgy and gel-like at the bottom. Okay, look at that. All right, so I'm going to be applying, or sorry, pouring, some of the product into this jar and then using about 
All right, just gonna eyeball this. It doesn't have to be exact. Now I'm making a little extra because I'm going to be doing the two drawer fronts as well, as well as a little bit at the bottom. That's gonna be plenty. Okay, so 5%. I'm just gonna put in directly into the container. Oops. It's, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's gonna thin it out enough. Your open time with this is about 15 to 20 minutes. So you'll want to make sure that your surface, if it was any wider than this, say for instance, if it was a tabletop, I would use a much wider brush than this two inch. And we do have the four inch stall maester, which is great for tabletops. Uh, if you were doing a floor, I would use a brush that is as wide as your floorboards. There are other times where you can use a roller as well, especially if you want to apply just a very thin amount. Okay, this is worked in nicely. Using my two inch natural bristle brush, I don't use the fancy ones, I just use the, the throwaways with my Chelsea and top coat. Dip it in and just start applying it. Now this is going to definitely get us away from the orange finish that's currently on here. I'm just putting on a good amount and then I'm gonna come back and even it out, going from one side to the other. Now it's a generous amount. You'll see that it evens out quite nicely. I will be painting the front of this edging, but I'm gonna do that later after my top coat has dried. Taking my brush and going outwards, because if I go this way, I'm gonna start drip marks along the edge. So what I'm really trying to do here is just apply it all over and then I'm going to even it out. So I could have probably put in just a tiny bit more of the thinner, but we're going to see how we do with this. Really want to get away from that color, that orange color. Okay, so going right across. And this will be able to level out nicely. Okay, I'm just going to leave that be. And across again, just leave it be. If you have extra, you can dump it down onto your surface you're working or put it back into your container. I wouldn't advise you putting it back into the, the, um, the quart itself, just in case you've come along and picked up some dust. That is definitely not your friend with this product. Any dust flying in the air can land on here. And if that happens, I just let it dry and deal with it after. Okay. So you don't have a completely uh, translucent stain. You're not going to be seeing the wood grain 100%. But we're trying to get away from this orange color and give a nice matte finish, a very durable top coat protection here. The trick is to try to apply it as evenly as possible. I will purposely just apply it thinner over here and you can see the difference. But I can come back and put some more on. Oh, I lost a bristle here. Now is the time to take it out for sure. So I'm gonna come back onto this area, oops. But if you were happy with this finish and uh, a little speck of dust landed on it, then I would just leave it be. Okay, so can you see 
At this side, I've got a thinner amount. This side is more the thicker amount, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to use a little bit more product and just apply it as evenly as possible. Now it is starting to level out a little bit here. I see a couple little dimples. Um, I'm just gonna go back over that with my brush. I still have, it's still open. Not sure what the dimples are from. There's another one there. But it could even be little pinholes within the wood itself. And it just has a bit of a bubble there. Alrighty, so that's going to, you can see a few of the brush strokes right now, but over the next 15 to 20 minutes, it's going to, those little hills are gonna flatten out. And I think I'm pretty, oops, pretty happy with this. Except for that one spot right there. There we go. Okay, just make sure that the dust isn't flying and you leave it be for quite a few hours. You don't want to do anything, like wait till the next day and you're gonna be good to go if you've got any kind of blemishes or any kind of felt or lint on there. You can take a very fine uh, sandpaper with some hemp oil and just kind of give it a little sand or pick it out. Um, if it's really bad, then you'll just wanna give it a sand and put another light coat on here. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a very durable, low sheen, so a matte finish that you can wash and wear for many years.